Good roll. Well, hi there. I'm here today with a whiptail lizard, which is funny because I want to talk to you about tegus, and this is, well, not a tegu, but tegus are in the family Teidae, which include both the whiptail lizards and the amoebas. The teid lizards are only distantly related to the varanid lizards, which are the monitors, even though they have a lot of very similar adaptations. So physically, they look kind of similar to monitor lizards, but they're not. Varanids, the monitors, are an old world group, which means they live, you know, in Australia, Africa, Asia primarily. And they have, in that part of the world, filled the niche, the role of a gigantic, even though not all of them are big, some of them are very small, like Ackies, and there are some that are way smaller than that. But the great big carnivorous lizard, that role is pretty much filled by the monitor lizards in the old world. The Teid lizards are a New World group, meaning in the Americas, and they have largely filled that same role just in a different part of the world. Whereas we commonly refer to all of the Varanid lizards as monitors, even the really little ones, we call them monitors, for some reason we don't call all of the Teid lizards tegus. Otherwise, this guy right here, this is a tiger whiptail, he would be some sort of righteous dwarf tegu, and honestly, I mean he pretty much is. If you look at him up close, he's just a little bitty tegu, and that's awesome. The largest of them all is Salvatore Mariene, the Argentine black and white tegu, like Gus Gus here. Now, I am aware that my pronunciation of the word Argentine just triggered a few people. We have received, honestly, a ton of comments about how annoying it is that I say Argentine instead of Argentine. Some people have even gone as far as to say that they have unsubscribed from our channel because they cannot stand to hear Argentine even one more time in their lives. And that was enough for me to want to make sure I was right about this. I mean, I don't want to ruin anybody's day, unless it's with the truth, like the fact that snakes have legs. Not all of them, but some of them do. So, I double-checked myself with Google, with the Oxford Dictionary, with Merriam-Webster, with the Macmillan Dictionary, with freedictionary.com, all just to make sure that if I'm going to keep saying Argentine, I'm saying it right. And all of these dictionaries, which actually will have links to all of these dictionaries, down in the description. And all of those dictionaries only had one pronunciation for this word, and that was Argentine. If you don't believe me, like I said, there are links to these dictionaries down in the description. You can listen to it yourself. Some people have complained that they themselves are from South America and that nobody in South America says it Argentine. And I agree, I actually lived in South America for two years myself, and they say Argentino. Pero a menos que diga Tegu. Argentino, blanco y negro, puede seguir diciendo Argentine. Anyway, I imagine that most of you have now left in disgust, but for those of you that remain, we've got a ton of stinking rad facts about the Argentine black and white tegu. Like the fact that well, they're the only warm-blooded lizard we know of, except for snakes. Uh, and yeah, I did just say that snakes are lizards. I reckon at this point I've wrecked your day enough already, so We'll save that for a different video. They're also one of the smartest of all lizards, though we're really not that great at assessing the intelligence of other species. We tend to judge them based on how well they do human things. And I just imagine the way that dolphins might assess us for our ability to do dolphin things. They'd be like, oh gosh, it was the strangest thing. I mean, we put him in there, he couldn't echolocate at all. Fish were basically running right into his face and he couldn't grab a single one with his mouth. And like half an hour into the experiment, he just forgot to go up for air and died. That's gotta be the stupidest animal I've ever seen in my life. And so sometimes assessing other species based on how well they do human things is probably not the best way to gauge how intelligent they are, but the problem solving ability of tegus seems to be very, very high. They're amazing. I mentioned before that the Argentine black and white tegu is part of the genus Salvatore, and that also includes two other species, which are Salvatore duceni, which is from Paraguay and Brazil. You've probably never seen this in the pet trade. I've never seen one personally. And also Salvatore rufescens, which is the red tegu, which I have definitely seen quite a few times 
They're kind of a roly-poly goofball that can take you. Really cool. Nice personality as well. Other studies have proposed introducing four additional species into the genus Salvatore, but as of now, it's just those three. Their species name, Marianne, is in honor of the German naturalist Maria Sibylla Marianne, which, to my understanding, she looked nothing like a tegu, and this is a prime example of how scientific names, which used to be excellent, have been totally ruined in the last few hundred years. If you want a better description of this, you gotta check out our 22 facts on Crested Gecko's video. This species includes both the Argentine black and white tegu, as well as the blue tegu. They're probably just different localities of the same species. That's why they look a little bit different, but they're very, very similar to one another. They can interbreed. As babies, they look pretty much like adults, except they've got a bunch of green on their head and going down their back, and males don't have the big jowls that they will have as adults like Gus Gus has. They can drop their tail both in sections or just the whole thing if threatened. They're not very likely to do it as adults, but as juveniles and babies, it's something definitely to watch out for, and they don't regrow it very well. Actually, sometime back, Gus Gus somehow broke the very tip of his tail, and so he dropped just the tip, tip, tip of his tail, and it is kind of domed over, and that's about the best that you ever get as far as regrowth on a tegu tail. It never grows back its length, it just kind of gets a little cap on the end, and it calls it a day. They generally move around on four legs, like Gus Gus, but they can also stand up on two legs like Tyrannosaurus rex and run very quickly. And the first time that I took Gus Gus out into the sun, he actually did this and he was jumping at me from this two-footed Tyrannosaurus rex stance. It was amazing, but kind of terrifying at the same time. Males like Gus Gus get considerably larger than females. They get to be four, four and a half feet, whereas females are more like three feet in length. And the males have these big fancy pants jowls that the females don't get. Those kind of come in when they hit maturity. As babies, as I mentioned, both males and females lack the jowls, but you can sex them very early on because males have a little scale right here, kind of an enlarged scale just at the base of their tail on both sides. And you can feel that even when they're little, that if they have that scale, that big and large scale, that's a male. They have very, very powerful jaws with really sharp teeth in the front and then more blunt teeth towards the back. And this reflects really well their omnivorous diet. These guys are omnivores, meaning they feed on basically everything that's alive except for woody plants. Uh, they're gonna have a lot of meat in their diet, things like insects, but also rodents and really just anything that they can overpower and then swallow. They're also gonna eat a lot of seeds and vegetation and fruits especially, just everything. We've recently discovered that tegus are endothermic, which means that they can use energy from food in order to heat their bodies. This is kind of the same thing that you do, but it's very uncommon among reptiles, and they're the only non-snake lizard that we know of that does this. They only seem to do this in the reproductive season, which is actually the case for the snakes as well. The snakes will shiver to warm their eggs. What tegus do is early in the morning before the sun even comes up, they can elevate their body temperature by like nine degrees Celsius, which is quite a bit. And so they're ready to go before any of the other reptiles are. Speaking of snakes, the teed lizards, including tegus, have a rad forked tongue, just like snakes, and that allows them directional smelling, which is a rad superpower. The Argentine tegus can be distinguished very easily from the Colombian tegus, like the Colombian black and white tegu, by more than just their price tag. One thing is they've got these large scales between their nostril and their eye. And on the Argentine tegus, there are two big scales there. On the Colombian tegus, there's just one even larger scale. So that'll be the best thing that you can look for if you're trying to decide if the tegu you're thinking about buying, perhaps, is actually an Argentine tegu or is a Colombian tegu, because there's a major behavioral difference between the two. When it comes to the habitat of these tegus, it turns out that the Argentine tegus have absolutely no respect for national borders. They're found in Argentina, which makes sense, but they're also found in Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and with a little help from people, Florida. This is actually why we have a whole video on what to do if you find that you can't keep your pet anymore, because releasing it into the wild is probably the worst possible thing you could do. 
Within their range, they inhabit basically every warm habitat, including forests, deserts, savannas. They're just kind of all over the place. If it's warm, there will be tegus there, and when it gets cold, they'll burmate, which means they'll, they'll slow down their metabolism. They won't eat as much. They won't be nearly as active for a while. And it's actually good for them to burmate in captivity as well. They also make just spectacular pets, which is why we have a whole video right there on what great pet lizards they are. If you're thinking about an Argentine black and white tegu, you should definitely check that out and try to make a wise decision as to whether or not that's the right pet lizard for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Jason. Sorry. Jason. Marianne. 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 This is a hard pronunciation. Marianne? Eh? Marianne! As babies, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I already mentioned that they're from the... Oh. As I mentioned earlier... Nope. Okay. Ooh, you've read Superpower, Mr. Guest? Good roll. That's his first one of the day. Mm -hmm. You're off your game, dude. Tegus make spectacular <laughs> daredevils. Oh. No roll? One roll for this whole video? That's all we're getting? Um, oh my goodness, it's an Argentine tegu. <laughs> no. Nope. I looked it up in a flock of dictionaries. We'll put a link to that video down in the description. Right next to our dictionaries.